Welcome, I am Teddy Tedesi, and today, we're delving into the essential post-patching tasks vital for SQL Server users. Whether you're a seasoned veteran or a bright-eyed newcomer, understanding the importance of these tasks will serve you well. The digital world we live in is ever-evolving and staying updated with the latest patches and upgrades is crucial. But it's not just about installing these updates, it's also about what you do after. That's where post-patching tasks come into play. From verifying server versions and reviewing logs to validating the health of your availability group, these steps ensure the smooth running of your SQL server. Over the next 10 minutes, we'll walk you through these tasks, giving you the knowledge and confidence to maintain the health and performance of your server. So, buckle up for this informative journey. Now let's dive into the first task, understanding the patch. After patching or upgrading, the first thing you should do is verify the server version. It's crucial to ensure that your SQL server has been updated to the expected version. How do we do this? Well, it's quite simple. You just need to run a select at at version command. This command will display the version of the Microsoft SQL server you're currently running. It's a quick and easy way to confirm that your patch or upgrade was successful. Now, keep in mind that this is just the first step in your post-patching journey. Verifying the server version is important, yes, but it's not the end all. It's a starting block a springboard that propels you into the next tasks. So, once you've successfully confirmed your server version, it's time to move on to the next step. Once you've confirmed the server version, next up is reviewing your logs. The next step is crucial. Reviewing your SQL server error logs, Windows event logs, and relevant application logs. Now, why is this so important? Well, these logs serve as the heart of your system. They quietly record every beat and rhythm of your SQL server providing invaluable insight into its functioning. Just like a doctor uses a stethoscope to listen to a patient's heartbeat, you, as a database administrator, utilize these logs to diagnose the health of your SQL server. Post-patching, it's essential to scrutinize these logs, looking for any unusual errors or warnings that might indicate a potential issue. Remember, the key to effective problem solving is early detection. So, don't skip this step. Be diligent, be thorough, go through each log with a fine-tooth comb, it's your best bet to catch and address any issues before they escalate into more complex problems. After reviewing the logs, it's time to check on the health of your availability group. Now we need to validate the health of the availability group. After patching or upgrading, it's crucial to ensure the health of your always-on availability group. To do this, we'll make use of system views. Specifically, we're looking at SIS DM Hatter Availability Group States, SIS DM Hatter Availability Replica States, and CS DM Hatter Database Replica States. By querying these system views, we get a clear picture of the state of our availability group and its replicas. But that's not all. We also need to check the synchronization status of the replicas. A healthy synchronization status is vital for the proper functioning of our availability group. If the status is not healthy, it might indicate an issue that needs to be addressed immediately. Remember, validating the health of your availability group is not a one-time task. It should be done regularly to ensure that your SQL server is functioning optimally. Once the AG health is validated, a failover test is necessary. The next step is to perform a planned manual failover to test the health of the AG post-update. This failover test is critical to ensuring the responsiveness and health of your always-on availability group after any updates. It's like a fire drill for your database, testing how well it can handle unexpected conditions and recover without data loss. So, how do you perform a failover test? You'll initiate a manual failover of your primary role. This will trigger a role switch to your secondary replica. You'll then verify that your applications reconnect as expected, keeping a keen eye out for any anomalies or data discrepancies. But we're not done yet. We also need to check your disk space post-patching. Patching and upgrading can sometimes consume additional disk space, so ensure there's sufficient free space on both data and log drives. This is also important for your TMPDB, which needs ample room to function properly. After these steps, it's time to back up your system. Now we should take backups of the system and user databases after patching or upgrading. This isn't just a best practice, it's a necessity. Backups serve as a safety net providing a fallback option in case any unforeseen issues arise post-patching. They ensure that no matter what, your data remains secure and accessible. But our work doesn't stop at backups. We also need to update statistics on the databases. You might wonder why. Well, statistics provide SQL Server with necessary information about data distribution in the tables. These statistics are used to generate optimal query plans. After a patch or an upgrade, 
these statistics might become outdated, potentially leading to less efficient query performance. So how do we do this? It's simple. We can use the update statistics command, which updates information about the distribution of key values for one or more statistics groups in the specified table or indexed view. Having done that, it's crucial to monitor the performance of your SQL Server instance. Monitoring your SQL Server instance performance after patching is vital. It's like being a detective, meticulously observing for any signs of change and anomalies. You're on the lookout for any performance degradation that may have slipped in unnoticed during the patching process. Tools such as the Performance Monitor, Extended Events, and SQL Profiler could be your best friends in this process, giving you insights into the heart of your server's performance. Just as important as performance is client connectivity. You want to ensure that all applications and services that rely on your SQL Server instance can connect successfully and function as expected. It's a bit like hosting a party. You've done all the preparations, and now you need to ensure that all your guests can arrive without any hitches. After ensuring performance and connectivity, testing key functionality is the next task. The next step is to test key business processes to ensure functionality. This is a crucial component of post-patching or upgrading your SQL Server instance. Depending on the application and critical business functions, you might want to run through key processes to ensure that everything is functioning as expected. This could involve executing specific database queries, performing certain transactions, or running any other operations that are critical to your business. Now, let's move on to reviewing your scheduled maintenance tasks. These tasks include backups, index maintenance, and statistics updates, among others. After patching or upgrading your SQL Server instance, it's important to ensure that these tasks continue to run successfully. Regularly scheduled maintenance tasks are crucial to the smooth running of your SQL Server instance, and any interruption to these tasks could potentially lead to serious issues down the line. Having tested functionality and reviewed maintenance, the next step is documentation. Documentation is a crucial step in the post-patching process. The importance of maintaining a written record of your actions cannot be overstated. This includes noting down the date and time of the patch or upgrade, detailing any encountered issues, and outlining the steps taken to resolve them. This documentation serves a dual purpose. Firstly, it helps you keep track of your system's history, which can be invaluable when troubleshooting future problems. Secondly, it aids in maintaining a level of transparency and accountability within your team, ensuring everyone is on the same page. Now let's shift gears to another critical aspect of post-patching testing your disaster recovery plans. If you have disaster recovery measures in place, such as log shipping or backups, and restores to another site, it's essential to verify they're still functioning as expected after the patch or upgrade. This is because patches and upgrades can sometimes cause unforeseen issues that may affect your disaster recovery procedures. Therefore, post-patch testing is a must to ensure your system continues to be resilient and robust. To test your disaster recovery procedures, run through your standard testing protocol. This could involve executing a mock disaster scenario and monitoring how your system responds. If you detect any issues, take immediate steps to address them to ensure your system's continued reliability. In conclusion, documentation and testing your disaster recovery plans are two vital steps in the post-patching process. By meticulously documenting your actions and systematically testing your disaster recovery plans, you ensure the continued health and stability of your SQL Server instance. With these steps, you should be well prepared for post-patching tasks. Thank you for watching, and remember to like, share, and subscribe.